Good morning and welcome to our act of remembrance here from Freecliffs Parish. I stand this morning beneath the war memorial here within the walls of St Mary's Church. The plaques that show the dedication to those who served in both the First and Second World Wars. Today we come to remember. We come to remember all who have lost their lives in conflict and we remember still those who suffer from their injuries, from their wounds. But we remember this morning especially those veterans who are unable to gather at war memorials throughout the country and must make their remembrance observances alone. So we begin with a moment of silence as we remember why we are here and reflect on this act of remembrance this day. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us, though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war, and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing, that we may do his will, that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and as King. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, with the right hand of God who indeed intercedes for us. So who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor nothing present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading today comes from John's Gospel. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You, my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. Because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may indeed love one another. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These readings resonate with our theme of remembrance today. There is indeed within John's Gospel a verse which is sometimes used directly and sometimes paraphrased on war memorials. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. It is a scripture verse that very soon after the First World War was used often to describe the great sacrifice that men and women had made in that conflict. And of course it resonates as well 
in Paul's letter to the Romans. The words, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. The imagery there is vivid. One only has to look at films and photographs of battlefields, the First World War, the Second World War, to realise that men and women indeed went to their deaths as bat sheep to be slaughtered, willingly, unknowingly, following orders, following instructions. For that is what warfare is all about. The soldier's ability to follow orders, even in the face of great difficulty, danger and potential death. We see it in films of soldiers of the First World War going over the top. We see it in films from the Second World War with men jumping out of aeroplanes or running to get into an aeroplane to take off. We see it in old films of submarine crews diving down to the depth below. And we see it on the faces of the veterans who are alive with us today. As I said at the beginning, today is a strange day for them. Normally they march with their comrades, they sit with their comrades, they leave wreaths with their comrades. And for many today, because of the COVID-19 restrictions, that is impossible. Yet we hold them in our prayers and we give thanks to them. For they were indeed like sheep to the slaughter and they did indeed lay down their lives for others. It is a sacrifice. It is a service that we cannot count the cost of. Sometimes the cost can be seen on cenotaphs and war memorials, on boards like these in churches or other memorials wherever they may be. But beneath the brass, beneath the wood, beneath the stone, there lies a human cost. A human cost which today we come to give thanks for. Not that they died, but that their lives, hopefully, were not wasted. In this troubled world in which we live, we so often think of the now and the present and what may happen in the future. But today our, turns to the, our thoughts turn to the past and to the lives of those who gave so much that we may enjoy our freedoms today. They didn't enjoy it and we should not waste it. They did what they did out of a sense of duty, of service and of sacrifice. And that is something very precious. We can, of course, equate it to the great sacrifice of Christ on the cross, the great servant, the Lamb of God, the servant of all, that once for all sacrifice given that we should know forgiveness and eternal life. But let us this day remember the sacrifice of those soldiers who gave so much that you and I can live. Let us not waste that life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and elsewhere. As we honour their courage and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Father, you know our hearts and share our sorrows. We are hurt by our parting from those whom we loved. When we are angry at the loss we have sustained, when we long for words of comfort, yet find them hard to hear, Turn our grief to truer living, our affliction to firmer hope. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy on those who mourn, who feel numb and crushed, who are filled with the pain of grief, whose strength is given up, 
You know all our sighings and longings. Be near to us and teach us to fix our hope on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, do not abandon us in our desolation. Keep us safe in the midst of trouble and complete your purpose for us. Through your steadfast love and faithfulness, in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of all nations. Together we say, Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all mankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us your wisdom. Give us courage. Give us hope. And keep us faithful, now and always. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Grace and mercy, righteousness and truth have come to us from God. Jesus has declared it, and the Spirit has made it known. The light shines and the darkness cannot overcome it. And we say together, lead me from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead me from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead me from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with me. Thank you for joining us this morning in our remembrance service. And wherever you are, whatever your connection to the events that we commemorate, be it through family or friends, or simply to those you wish to say thank you to. Let us always remember and keep and honour this day. Thank you. <laughs>